So, I buy these, uh, I used to buy these packs of, uh, uh, Chlorettes. I call them chiclets because, you know, this is your particular, but it's chlorettes. And they come in this, like, two-pack thing here. And it used to be that they have, okay, it used to be they had the green, now they have, so they just had a green one, then they, then they came out with a blue one. The blue one has mint in it. So the green one has green. I would buy the green all the time and then like the blue. Then they came out with this thing, right, where they come in a thing like this, and it's like blue and green. So you figure there's a one green in there and one blue in there. Well, I got to open this thing, and both of them are blue. I don't like the blue. I really, I'm not into this blue thing. I mean, I like blue the color, but this, 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 no. The green one was the original one and really good. The blue one just don't work for me. It's terrible. And so I got to thinking. Now, here's the thing. Here we go back in time. Um... I've had a lot of readings in my life, a lot of all kinds of spiritual readings. Some of them and so on. Stuff. I, I, yeah, I use them as parlor games. Doesn't matter. But one of the times, you know, somebody was reading a past life thing, and they said, "Well, you know, in the past life, you know, one of your past lives, uh, you was a very rich person, but you was a miser. You would have to, you would be living in this very big uh, uh, estate, you know, a big uh, home. Uh, but you would, you would have the, the, the electricity be off. You use candles. You treat your, your servants really poor. Blah blah blah." You know, like, mm, uh, uh, my past life, let me leave that alone if that's true or not. Okay, okay. So now, as I say, though, I say, I say that the, um, one year, I think this is like 19, uh, no, 2000, whatever, 2002, yeah, the end, no, 2001, end of 2001, I believe. It doesn't matter, but at some particular time, um, I was going to um, I was going to Toronto, Canada, Toronto, and, 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 and my girlfriend at the time was coming with me. We was going to uh, visit this uh, this really rich guy that I know, uh, Dr. Kenneth Mills. Don't worry about him. He's passed. Peace and blessings on his eternal soul. He was a big guy. He's a choral director. I met him like that, and uh, he. Hi, darling. Hi, baby. It's ginseng tea. Ginseng. Mm. Okay, great. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Mm. Ooh, it's gonna be way too hot for me. <laughs> um, so, so on the, so 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 she she lived in uh, Silver Spring, Maryland, and we was going to Toronto. So I I had rented a car, and uh, but I was going up. But we was going through New York. I was going to visit a friend in New York. Now the friend in New York was visit, visiting. Her name is Su Susanna, this old friend of mine. I, I met her. Uh, very interesting circumstance. Anyway, she came up from Brazil. Some people I knew that I had met in Brazil, they referred her to me. I helped her out. We became uh, good buddies. Um, she was one of my dance partners. Oh, you know, she, but, you know, we, we had a very interesting relationship. You know, we both uh, did what we needed to do. Anyway, so at one particular point, so, uh, after we had, you know, now, I haven't seen her in a while. I had seen her in a while for one, one time, and then I met her, so how are you doing, blah, 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 and she was with a, a uh, I should say, she was a university student at the time, she was uh, doing her master's in something or another. Um, but she uh, hooked up with this guy that was very abusive, you know, a very abusive guy. Uh, and uh, I said, well, why do you do that? You know, because he's really smart, she's a really smart woman, you know. She knew a lot of stuff. She says, I don't know, da, da, da. she went through this whole thing. Uh, it's like, you know, Martin the Bad Boys kind of thing. Okay, fine. So some a uh, few after that, I met her, I saw her again, and she was uh, hanging out with this this uh, trust fund baby she had met on, um, not Sag Harbor, but one of those, you know, out there in Long Island, one of those places. And uh, while well, she was, anyway, so she dumped the other guy who was with this guy now. But this was like a trust fund baby. Me, you know, just looked like an, it's like an academic kind of person, you know. Uh, but he lived in, in Queens, in that section of Queens, not Queens, in Brooklyn, that section of Brooklyn. Uh, you know where they filmed uh, Sophie's Choice? You know, the, the Meryl Streep movies that made her famous, Sophie's Choice? I don't know, uh, made her famous, but you know, one of her uh, roles. Uh, anyway, in that neighborhood, there's huge, big houses, you know, this is old New York money, whatever it is, you know, medium New York money, whatever it is. So he, there was, she was living there. Um, so she was living with him. So the shows, they invited me, us over, as we was going to, 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 to Toronto, you know, to, to have a layover and then go to Toronto. Um, so anyway, so in there, it was interesting because this place was not, it was wintertime. We was going up there, this was like doing a Christmas thing and things like that, or a New Year's thing. Anyway, it was cold, human. He didn't have any of the rooms heated, right? And, and, and all he did all day, he was a trust fund baby, all he did all day was basically read. So I'm looking at this thing, I'm saying, you know, what makes these people, that's what they did. So they, think, think of it like this, all these trust fund babies, they have time to uh, do other things other than to work or to, when I say work, you know, but distract them from whatever they don't want to do, 
let me go back now. I don't know if we jumped a little bit, but follow me on this. So when I looked at this, just uh, this Clorets thing, I'm calling, I call it chiclets, but I should do the brand thing. Anyway, I'm going like, look, they they give us they give us the green one, and then they try to give us a, a thing where we're gonna have both, but they don't really do that. They do what they want to do. This is, so who does somebody sit down and plot this thing? Because obviously they're trying to phase out either they're trying to phase out the green and give us the only the blue, or I don't know what they're trying to do, or I don't know what the deal is. But it's some sort of nefarious thing. I say nefarious. So I'm thinking, like you know, this is what happens, you know, when these all these what what ADOS is up against really. No, no, I shouldn't say that. What ADOS has to don't have to do that either. Here's the deal: <laughs> all these people that got this trust fund, they had the, the wealth that they got off of, off of, of, of uh, our descendants of chattel slavery, us people, right? It's been in their generations to, to where their grandson or their great grandson no longer has to work. They can sit down and plot and plan how to do. And if they're not just home plotting and just you know reading a book, they can plot and plan how to you know pull the wool over somebody's eyes, you know? <laughs> you know? They can plot and plan how to thwart this movement. They can plot and plan, how to plot and plan, plot and plan, plot and plan. They got the time and resources to do it. We, but what's interesting about this movement, what really fascinates me about this movement is that it's, 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 it, Basically, it's a virtual movement. It's like it's a modern movement. It's a virtual movement because anybody, like right now, I, I'm saying I'm, I'm behind uh, a desk, just one desk of the American uh, descendants of child slavery. So here's the thing. We could, this is a virtual desk. I mean, I'm coming to you through the camera. It's a virtual desk. We have desks all over the place. All you have to need, all you need is the facts of this, of the situation, the fact of, of, of um, getting our debt paid. Forget this, I don't, I'm, I'm, you understand? A debt is owed. Now you're now you're at you're at a debt desk. This is a debt desk. I want to collect on this debt, and, I, and, and what I'm doing is, and I'm taking the information I get from Antonio Moore, and then the information I get from Vet Carnell, the information I'm getting from uh, 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 Professor Doherty and his wife, uh, Derek Hampton. I'm getting this kind of information plus a plethora of other people that are really. Uh, great scholars are out there and they're all commenting on this but they all are you know commenting in juxtaposition to to um, uh, to uh, Yvette and and um, and Antonio you see so so I'm thinking this is fascinating this is the only way we can beat them they they have the wealth of whatever having to sit back and, and chill but we have the numbers and we have the virtualness and we don't have to worry about uh, um, uh, somebody sniping at, at our leaders whatever have you because in, in in fact each one of us are leaders in a, in, a, in a way you know what I mean we're leaders that don't that don't lead by looking for for followers we're, we're, we are leading in this charge to get this debt repaid to get this debt addressed we got to address the debt oh this is a slogan address the debt that's a pretty good one I like that one address the debt you know, people can say res uh, uh, reparation, whatever, but hey, I don't do I don't do Instagram or nothing like that, or, or the hashtags, you know, the, what do you call that, the Twitter, whatever. So I can't put address the debt as a as a hashtag. But you get it, right? Okay, you you get it because it comes from me, T, from the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet. Stop. Letting you know what I only suspect from a death of the American descendants of child slavery.